I'm uh, Victor Henderson. I'm a watercolour painter. And, and I say that because I struggle quite often about people who say, Oh, do you not do oils? <laughs> Have you tried acrylic? And, and I just think there's a huge tradition in Scotland of watercolour. But it gets a very bad name. It gets kind of genteel lady kind of stuff. And I like to use big, bold colours and shapes and brushes and um, just attack the paper and, uh, and see what happens because what a colour is mutable, it's like water and I'm a Pisces. So when I went to secondary school there was one of these old Scottish art teachers, Mary McBride, and all I remember from Mary McBride was, keep it wet, keep it wet, and I just loved it and she saw something in me, liked me, whatever, but I would get the sable brushes and I would get the artist's colour where the others that were just daubing away got all the cheap stuff and uh, she was the one who encouraged me to go to art school and I got accepted for Glasgow School of Art but I was far too young, I bought a pair of red trousers from Jaeger and never attended a single solitary lecture <laughs> and I spent my life in health service and psychotherapy and working with nurses and social workers and, and uh, enjoyed that really. I did a wee course down at um, Dumfries and there's a guy there called um, Sparway. He was really encouraging, he looked at my work and said you should show somebody this. So I'd always passed White House Gallery and thought it looked a bit upmarket. You know, I'd looked through the window and uh, these two people sitting in there surrounded by all this good stuff and I thought well, I can't go in there. Anyway, I did go pluck up the courage to go in and, uh, and Rosie and Lynn were there and they were preparing for an exhibition, God help them, and, but they gave me some time and uh, Rosie just flung everything kind of on the floor and was going, that's good, that's good. And she was really good at just saying to me, that works, that doesn't. And, uh, and then at the end she said to him, well, we could take seven of these for the next exhibition. And I was absolutely flabbergasted, I can believe that. When I'm working in the studio, I'm not thinking about framing it, I'm not thinking about studios, uh, galleries. And you can see that if not the studio there, but it is a total heap mess. It's like Francis Bacon's studio, you know, and that's because you rake around and you find something, you can make a mark with it, but you wouldn't ordinarily have thought of it, you know, so if you've been better organised. I use um, handmade paper, Artistico, Fabriano usually. One sheet of that is about £9.50. So there is a point where you're sitting there wanting to do something spontaneous and quick and you know, you, you've got this white, pristine, lovely, heavy piece of paper that somebody has lovingly pulped and dried and hung up and it, it, it's, it's, it's a hard bit to get past actually, you know, so and I'm not the kind of person who paints with a brush with two wee hairs and I'm not a botanical painter um, uh, and I love botanical paintings um, and, and sometimes I think I would like to go to a botanical painter and learn to be a bit more um, observant of the actual thing that I'm painting. What I do is I look at flowers and think, that's an iris, oh that's an iris, and there's another iris. And in my head there's iris shapes that, that correspond to the hacky brushes that I use. So I know that to do an iris I do two flicks, a couple of things to the side, and then the big petted lip that the iris has, and then might drop in some other colour that'll, that'll spread. And the other thing that that flowers do, it lets you use amazing colours. Um, for, for this exhibition, I think I'd worked on about 11 pieces, um, flower pieces. And I think there are several different kinds of things I do. One is um, like wildflower riot, where geranium type thing, there were um, wild poppies, there were buttercups, that formation of buttercups, which is almost angular and then at the top. And so I, did, I tried to do something that, that just got the spirit of that abundance and craziness and, and everything is very thin and uh, on top of each other. And I used for that, which I, I try to use a bit more sparingly, is masking uh, fluid where you can, you can draw with the masking fluid using a tip. 
and, and continue to overlay stuff on it and then when you rub it off at the end there is this either white paper or coloured stuff below it which comes out in the flower shape. And, um, if you compare that one with um, flowers in a white crock, it has on, on the right hand side of it a mistake in inverted commas because I did a thing which is quite a good way to start negative painting where if you have a white thing then obviously the paper's white so you're painting around it to create the shape of the, the, the crock, the bowl, the jug. And I'd kind of, it was a bit lopsided so I tried to correct it which was crazy but I left the correction in. And, it, and it's formed a kind of shadow to one side. A curious, odd thing that's happened, and it's just one of those accidental things. The first opening, I mean, I've been in therapy for years and years. I've taught, I understand the inner life, I understand narcissism. But going to that was the, it was the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. It's like suddenly saying to people, look at me naked, um, judge me, like my stuff, please. You know? And luckily a lot of it sold very quickly, so I thought, oh, thank God, you know, so so that was good. And since then I have been a bit more kind of um, focused in the way that I'm, I'm thinking about it. I've got a website and I send stuff off to, to galleries and, and not had a, a one-man exhibition yet, but um, have exhibited in reasonable places around Scotland.